Hey what's up everyone welcome to another video this is the third and the final part of the video series with Nitish who is studying masters in software engineering at Cargany Mallon University CMU like always I'll leave the timestamp right here so you can skip to any part of the video you want to in this video we talk about how he had four job offers or internship offers and why did he pick SAP and what was his internship strategy what was his resume tips uh, how did he approach recruiters and all the fun stuff behind finding an internship in United States. Nitesh, if you're watching this, thank you so much for doing this. It means a lot to me and our UD Squad community. Also, I'm very grateful for all the love and support you've been giving me in my recent videos. Thank you for doing that. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And now I'll let you enjoy the video. Let's do a quick round of uh, Well, currently I'm in Pittsburgh and, uh, and I'm at CMU doing my master's in software engineering. Um, I kept coming from Mumbai in India and in Pittsburgh, well, every, as everyone is, I'm going through online education as everybody is. Yeah. Now let's get into the final part where people are waiting for. I'm, I'm waiting for because I want to know personally, you had so many job offers. When did you start your internship search? So, uh, the whole procedure started when I was in India. <laughs> so what? I... I started up with uh, making list of companies, so I didn't want to do that. So I created this whole list of companies where uh, there were around, I think, 200 companies in the U.S. with their job links, like uh, the career page links, basically, yeah. that I can just click and start applying. So I created wow. this list of companies uh, when I was in India. Uh, just I had this time gap between college undergrad ending and coming yeah. for them. Coming, yeah. Yeah. The, the, I say this um, like job search doesn't start in like two months before you graduate or two months before mm -hmm. summer. It starts the day you land. But you like went above and beyond. It starts <laughs> before even you come. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's that's actually my uh, my dad asked me to do it like I was sitting at home I had only one course going on I had a little bit of free time and it's like do this I mean what's wrong with it right that awesome. is cool yeah. so how so yeah. how tell us the progression after that what happened so after I made the list I after coming to the US uh, I was going so I, I took a break when I needed to adjust to US and then adjust to the course how things went the cycle of assignments begins yeah, yeah. every week the same cycle happens again and again yeah after adjusting to that I think uh, after I, I started applying in full swing around uh, October I think October okay yeah. uh, for and summer internship you started yeah. in October okay October. Yeah. yeah so uh, once I started applying in October I didn't hear much back uh, I did have a few interviews I interviewed actually a, with a lot of companies so uh, one thing which is important in coding interviews is practice you need to be in the right mindset so yeah when it comes to coding interviews you need to be in the flow you should have practiced for one or two months which I hadn't done and that is a wrong step that I took that I should have first practiced and then gone into the absolutely like did you do lead code and hacker rank or no so yeah it's doesn't matter which resource you pick all resources are the same uh, yeah. I use this book called CTCI cracking the coding interview yes it's a really really nice book I yeah. liked it I, I bought it in uh, undergrad and I did a few questions from that and the yeah. theory and the explanation of things is also very good in that right I think I have it I have it. Wait, let me let me pull this up. There, this one, right? Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a great book, actually. Yeah, I love it. I, I, when I was, uh, you know, when the days when I was like really interested in software engineering, that's mm -hmm. when I used to refer this book. But yeah, I recommended everybody when I made that video for software yeah. development. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead. Uh, so yeah. You're, Apart from that, in undergrad, I was using this one website called Interview It, which is uh, which is not a lot of questions, but I think it's enough for like you can finish the in like uh, a month or something. Yeah. They have like uh, sorted the questions based on the data structure, like trees, stacks, queues, graphs, uh, greedy, and DP and everything. So they've sorted the problems based on, and then not many problems. I think each category has a fifteen twenty questions so before before we actually get to how to interview i want to know uh how to get interview did, did you do career fairs or all your interviews through online application i did do career fairs cmu has a really nice career fair and yeah. it gets really hectic it's a four-hour activity where you're standing in lines <laughs> in line after line line after line you get so uh, we had a career fair in fall 
Mm. And uh, I applied to a lot of companies, and uh, I think I got callbacks from two of them. Okay. Uh, I, I applied to so many, and the conversion rate is very small, sadly. <laughs> yes. But uh, I only got callbacks from two companies uh, from career fairs. Mm. Apart from that, uh, I apply, mostly applied online, mm. and uh, I applied a lot. And your videos were on there, so. I got a lot of rejects, and I remember you saying in that video, "You need to apply to thousand companies. You'll get so many rejects. It's very discouraging for people. Yes, because you'll get so many rejects, and you'll be like, 'Shit, there's something wrong with my resume or profile, perhaps, which is why I'm getting so many rejects.' But that's not the case. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of factors that play in. There is a lot of factors. What What are some of the factors you think? So after applying so many, in so many places, the so factors I think are like what is what are the what is the company that is looking for? How desperate is the company for hiring a new intern? Yes. Uh, even if say you are you did your coding uh, round really well, you did your interview also really well, but suppose they found some other guy who has two years of experience in the stack they are looking for, then they'll obviously pick the guy who has two years of experience. Right. the stack they are looking for another factor that comes in is uh, i think is when you apply so suppose some guy applied before you who went, he went through the coding process before finished the interview before you and they're like okay that fits us and they just take him in the slot got filled yeah <laughs> and you were just left out with a rejection <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah 100% yeah so a lot uh, of factors man did you work on your resume and linkedin a lot or like Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I think uh, around uh, so the the CPD, the career and professional uh, division here at CMU helps you out with your resume a lot. So you can hire, get an appointment with the person mm. who there is one person dotted to SCS, and that person helps you out with your resume building and any questions you have regarding applications or jobs or internships. So that you can get an appointment with that person, and they help you out a lot. Yes, I cannot emphasize on this that each university have this. Uh, it's called Career Center for him, mm. like for CMU. It's different name, but uh, you pay money for this, so make sure you utilize that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, so now you apply to it. Uh, how many, roughly, how many companies do you think you must have applied? I have this uh, one folder in my email called rejections. <laughs> And I think uh, I, it's got around some four uh, hundred or five hundred rejections or something. <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh wow! I don't think I moved all of them there, but there's like a lot of rejections. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, how many interviews did you do? Uh, roughly, I would say around twenty, uh, twenty or. Twenty twenty five interviews. Mm-hmm. Okay. What other companies did you had offers from? Uh, the other companies were so there's Nomura. If you heard of Nomura, the financial it's a big financial institution. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's another place called Chatham Financial. It's a small time. Uh, no, it's not a small time. Actually, it's a pretty big. They got it's a big financial, pretty big yeah. financial institution based out of uh, Kennett Square in Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah another company was FedEx. Alex okay and yeah. SAP of course you uh, yeah. that's the one which you're going with walk us through an interview process like you know what's how many rounds uh, and like uh, blackboarding what what or whiteboarding did you have to go through all of that or like give us one example it depends from company to company how many stages they have so some companies call you in for on site and they're like okay uh, we'll have four rounds of interviews back to back uh, 30 minutes each and there'll be guy, uh, people coming in and interviewing you one after the other and some companies just have uh, two rounds of online interviews over webcam where you just uh, do it on coda pad or right. something like that yeah what kind of questions they ask uh? the more you practice the luckier you get okay right. uh, the more you practice the more likely it is that a question that you've already seen comes up and yeah. uh, if it, even if it isn't you practice so much that you will have something in the back of your mind where if you think about it you will be able to figure it out yeah it's yeah. usually data structure questions uh, it's weird actually uh, i never got asked any graph questions for some reason uh, oh. i people say that graph questions tend to be on the more difficult side and some people say interns never get asked that but i think they are i'm not sure i never got asked any graph questions well that good they did ask us <laughs> <laughs> yeah, neither neither DP act. No, actually, there was one question, one interview that was DP, but uh, mostly trees or stacks or queues. Uh, 
Yeah. Did you had to do whiteboarding? I know that you be talked about the web app where you had to code, but did you have to do whiteboarding anywhere? In Chatham Financial was one where they uh, got me on site and they asked me to do one after the other. There were four coding rounds. Yeah. And uh, in I think all three of the four rounds there were actually coding rounds and there was a whiteboard I had to actually write uh, some sort of code on the board. Yeah. Yeah, for people who don't know what is whiteboarding is basically when you go on site for an interview, uh they kind of uh, describe a problem statement that hey, this is what we want to achieve. Uh, I'm giving you very like a overview of it. Uh, and then you have to start either an algorithm format or if they might mention that they want it in this language, but usually it's pseudo code or algorithmic code. You start writing it and then the whole intention is to see how you're trying to solve the problem how was your interview and what and do you have tips for preparation yeah so this is one of the most important things how do you interview so uh, the author of ctci gail lackman mcdowell she has a video on youtube as in she tells you how to interview and then there's google's uh, video on how do you interview then a lot of people post how do you interview so imagine yourself being in the position of the interviewer and what will happen if you just start typing code and you don't explain what you're thinking and you you always need to think out loud first thing you always think out loud you always tell them what you're thinking what is your thought process even if that might be wrong that's fine you say okay this is what i'm thinking maybe this might work so that he get the interviewer gets an idea about how this guy thinks how how he approaches any sort of problem mm. and is he a problem solver or stuff like that so this is not actually a test of because nobody actually asks uh, like nobody has 30 minutes in an actual work environment to write a, a search algorithm right, right. so you usually look up things and do it so the coding interview is essentially looking to what sort of problem solver you are like are you how do you approach a problem how do you solve it how do you think so that is what an interview is trying to judge in mm-hmm. a sort of coding interview like how how many rounds for sap did you have uh i had uh, one coding round and two hiring manager rounds uh two rounds with different those so where i'm working with sap uh, i i interviewed with uh, two hiring managers which were sort of like they were getting to know my thought process as to how whether my ideologies of working in a company are similar are aligning with theirs right. and stuff right. like that right right whether you will fit in the culture and whether you yeah. fit the team yeah and there was one coding round so in like what give us an example of like behavioral questions they asked you they i'm assuming that's what they asked you well it it was actually it went like a very casual conversation they asked me about okay what courses have you been taking up at cmu and uh, how are these courses been going uh, what sort of assignments do you have uh then they were like which technology stack do you like how uh, how do you go about it how do you keep updated on it Mm. so where do you get your uh, like questions like that how do you stay updated so basically they're looking at what sort of person you are yeah. and you how much do you love technology basically they're trying right. to judge and guess yeah that's awesome well, what's the you don't have to give me your salary range but like you know give us salary range for uh software developer is is it in uh, pittsburgh or off uh, no. it's all remote <laughs> it's an it was supposed to be in la but now it's remote yeah, yeah 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 so what's the salary range for software developer um uh, it, it actually depends on the city in which uh, you get it so if it's like a major city like new york or uh, say uh, west coast somewhere in california then it'll be somewhere around uh, 43 to 50 dollars uh, i think i think someone someone even got like someone i know even got like 55 or 60 dollars <laughs> wow like <laughs> some people oh my opinion. god that's uh, wow i'm going to calculate real quick uh, let's let's, <laughs> let's just uh, for fun sake uh, uh when he says 43 to 53 uh, i'm going to take in 45 per hour uh, and you will work 40 hours so and then you will do into four so it's it's a seven to uh, of course you can't see it but it's a uh, okay. 7200 yeah yeah per week yeah per month per month yeah uh, per month sorry yeah uh, yeah uh, that would be good to have per week as well <laughs> yeah yeah it it actually depends on the city uh 
if it's like east coast or west coast like if it's new york or california it's pretty uh, huge but i think uh, in pittsburgh it's a little bit uh, if you do work in a company here unless it's like a big time company like uh, uber or facebook or something like that uber pays really well actually in pittsburgh my roommate worked uber uh, last summer and pays pretty well and yeah. unless it's a big company cities like uh, pittsburgh usually pay lower like somewhere around 35 to 40 Dude, that's, so <laughs> that's not low at all <laughs> i mean uh, I, yeah I, I, i mean in comparison in comparison, comparison yeah yeah awesome man again uh, thank you so much for doing this till our next one keep smiling and keep hustling bye